Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is Palm Sunday, April the 5th, 2020. Today we are talking about true freedom. Romans 6, 1 through 14 is our scripture. Michelle is... Oh. Well, Michelle's just off camera. She'll be here in just a minute. <clears throat> our verse this morning is Romans 6, 23. All right. There you go, Romans 6, 23. Actually, it might be easier if I just put it up on the screen behind me. That might be... Easier. Boop, boop. Come on now. Oh, I'll go. switch off. There we go. All right. Romans 6.23. I'll look off over at Michelle. Michelle, you can keep me honest, right? <clears throat> Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Mm -hmm. Romans 6.23. Yes. There we go. Romans 6.23. All right. <clears throat> Michelle, I believe you have something you wanted to uh, read for us, yeah? Yes, I do. I would like to read to you some very interesting information that talks a lot about our lesson today. There's a lot of talk today about the concept of freedom. Lots of people don't like the idea of the government or anybody else setting limits on what people can and cannot do. Of course, none of us are completely free to do whatever we want, but most people like the idea of being as free as possible. In this session today, we're going to see Paul point out how all people are not as free as they might think on at least two counts. We're all sinners, that's the first one, and we're all going to face death one day. Simply put, to be truly free, a person would need to figure out how to shake off these two huge limiting factors, sin and death. So as we study Romans 6, verses 1 through 14, we will see how our Savior has conquered sin and death so that we might truly live and find true freedom. All right. <clears throat> Romans 6, 1 through 14. Yep. I don't have to remember where it's at. It. I know, right? Boy, I tell you what. It has been so crazy this week. It has. Hey, everybody. How are y'all this morning? Hi. What do you think? You got a you got kind of a thing going there. I got a thing going here. I got some some social distancing upgrade. Yes, I have upgraded. What do y'all think? Do you like it? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not too sure. I'm fogging up my glasses over here. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me? So I think I'm fixing to take this off. But this is part of my freedom thing. Okay. Okay, because I felt free... To go out and do my stuff. Do everything I need to do. My hair looks really bad right now, doesn't it? But this afternoon, the CDC said that they would like for us to start considering wearing a mask when we go out in public. Okay. So I thought I would give it a shot and see what this mask thing is all about. All right. How's that working for you? It's not working too good. Hmm. Glasses keep fogging up. Hmm. The colors, I'm not too sure about the color scheme. I don't, yeah. You know, I'm not too sure. It's not going to match everything, which that's cool. I thought about getting one of those masks where you, Don said he's seen some where people are drawing, like guys are drawing a mustache on their oh, okay. yeah. mask and girls are drawing like lipstick lips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that might be fun. That could be good. So. It's almost just, like one of those, uh, like a Snapchat filter. Yeah. Uh, only it's permanently Old school. yeah it's permanently yeah. stuck to your uh, i your think face, that's yeah. an awesome idea so i'm going to go. just go back to the normal oh yeah that's so much better hi so i'm going to go back to the normal thing and lose my mask for a while let me fix my hair because i'm a girl and it's all about the hair so i hope you guys had an awesome week yep i hope you're getting used to online school i hope Yay. that's going okay so all, all our homeschool friends are like Dude, whatever we, 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 we got this thing in the bag y'all yep. y'all public school people y'all you know private school people y'all are noobs at this you know homeschool <laughs> yep. thing and they're like man whatever we got this going Although on i have to say much love and respect to our homeschool folks yes. who have been posting helpful words of encouragement online like That's facebook right. throwing some stuff out there being like hey mm -hmm. for all you public school moms who are like oh my gosh school did not go well today you know i barely got the kids to do anything you know and these even some of these are even like coming from professional educators wow Wow. Who, once it comes to like getting your own kids going, mm -hmm. some folks are even um, professional <clears throat> educational 
administrator type people like principals and assistant principals that are on my school. I know people those. I know those And some people. of them are kind of like, man, I'm like, you know, an assistant principal at my school, but <laughs> get my own kids to do stuff and homeschool. This no. is, you know, online education. It's tough, you know. It's hard. But, but again, much love and respect for the uh, the homeschool folks who have been no putting some comments and some encouragement and some yep. t- pro tips and some, you know, just stuff out there. So again, you guys are clearly the experts here. We appreciate you uh, sharing sharing the love with those of us who are kind of new to this game. So. Yes, because we are all appreciate learning that. as we go. And some of us are working from home. That gets all kind of crazy. Some mm-hmm. of us have to still go to work and social distance from the people that we work with. That's kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. It's just all kinds of nuts. I went to the pharmacy today to pick up some prescriptions. And lo and behold, they are making, are you ready for this? They Under. are what is it? What do you call it when a, a pharmacist compounds? They are compounding hand sanitizer. Wow. I kid you not. She was like, well, we have hand sanitizer. And I was like, really? I want a thing of hand yeah. sanitizer because we're running low, right? And we haven't been able to find it at the store. It comes in like a cough syrup bottle, you know, the hmm. yellowy, orangey kind of color okay. of the bottle. And it's that tall and it's kind of narrow and then big like this. And it's hand sanitizer. It looks like it's got a lot of alcohol in it. Just from the consistency of it, but... You know what makes the best hand sanitizer? No. It's when you take regular hand sanitizer, yeah. and then you put a Reese's egg inside of it. No way! What an awesome idea. Could you imagine anybody ever coming up with such an amazing idea? It's what freedom in America is all about. This That's is... Right. Um, look at this. Okay. <laughs> Not anyone could come up with Germix. That's right. That was Reese's tinted. Germ- That's right. <clears throat> and, you know, I had had this question before. Yes. Is this still any good? Because yeah. this Reese's egg has been in there for a long time. No, wait a minute. You mean the hand sanitizer is still good or the Reese's egg? I'm thinking, I no The hand no sanitizer is still good, yeah. Okay, because there's... Egg, no, the eggs I'm not no. going to touch that. Let's just all sanitize our hands. That's right. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. So anyway, our freedoms have really been challenged through this whole process that we're going through. You know what? I have washed my Chicken hands butt? so much that Al... It's like stingy. Yes. Have you noticed that? I did. In fact, um, it's been several years ago now, but the uh, when the swine flu thing was kind of coming around Fort Worth uh-huh. a little bit. It smells like um, Reese's peanut they, butter cup. They put, the, they put the big hand sanitizer things in in my classroom at uh-huh. school. Not without without the Reese's, though. It wasn't the awesome kind like we have in the youth room. <laughs> yeah. But it was still a big one like this one. And so I found myself like getting just going in a little bit of that like between classes even sometimes in the middle of class i go over there and get another one and after about a week of that stuff i was like man my hands are so dry what is going on and i was like oh it's dry it's that stuff and then yeah. I, I got some of the kind that had like the aloe in it mm-hmm. but then your hands just feel all slimy Green. yeah, yeah you're like greasy and slimy. yeah and see like i have cuts on my hands for sup for i don't know paper cuts whatever it's an office thing but yeah oh yeah there's alcohol in that stuff oh yeah, yeah and you the can reese's the peanut yep. butter cup has not <laughs> neutralized the not alcohol that. content yeah. no yeah. Yeah. so yeah. anyway we're talking about freedom today and we're going to be in romans chapter 6 we're going to read uh verses 1 through 14 but before we start i'd love to open uh, for us to open in prayer would you do the honor sir would be happy thank you absolutely god we thank you that the free gift that we find in your son jesus is life in spite of the death consequences that have come through sin and God, we pray that as we look at your scripture today, that you would speak clearly to us. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're going to start in verses, uh, verse 1 okay. of chapter 6. So turn your Bibles <clears throat> over to Romans 6. We're going to start in verse 1. And we're going to watch Paul have some amazing sarcasm just to kind of lead us into scripture. Sarcasm? Because, yes. I speak sarcasm. I speak it as well. I'm multilingual. Yes, I do. I am too. Well, you are multilingual. <laughs> okay, so yes, you are. Well, that gives you sarcasm. how many languages now? If you've got sarcasm to add to. It's, Let's say one and a half. I don't know. <laughs> but there's some Chinese. You got some Chinese going on. You got Spanish. Mm, you gotta have Spanish. Yeah. Teacher. My English is a little sketchy though. Whatever. Whatever. Okay. So verses. Let's just go ahead and start. We're gonna read verses. Hmm. Um, let's start with one and two. One and two. Yeah, let's do one and two. And then we're gonna kinda of, so we can catch the sarcasm and then we'll kind of move on from there. So let's do one and two. <clears throat> I'm sorry, you're still picking students to read? You know, today we're not going to pick students, but next week I'm going to phone a friend and let one of y'all read. So I'm going to let you go ahead and read today, verses 1 and 2, sir, if you don't mind. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? So what is he actually saying here? Well, it's kind of finishing up the, the previous idea that ah. 
that there's this that God gives more and more grace, mm-hmm. and that you know we are not saved by the works we've done. We're saved by His grace, and we're like, right. well, then, in order for God to be more gracious, why don't I just throw some more sin around for Him to forgive? Then you know, if, if God's ah. grace is going to abound in forgiving uh-huh. my sin, well, shouldn't I just up the sin count? So he ups his grace count and he is like, you know, so, so we continue to sin so that uh-huh. grace can abound. And he's like, yeah, no, no, that's that a no. It. That isn't it. And so I kind of think that part of the the reason that he put that in there with this little bit of sarcasm mm-hmm. is that the Romans were really probably asking this question legitimately. And he's hmm. like, yeah, no. I mean, you think about people who have a sin problem, which, gee, that would be probably all of us. But you think about people that want to skirt around the rules as much as they can. Um, And so they're trying to wiggle out ways to do and not do the things that they're supposed to do. And so it's like they're challenging what God has set forth for us. Mm. That's never a good thing to do. It's like when when people have a, a religious perspective that says, here's a big old list of rules. And if I follow these rules, then I will be right with God. And so when someone comes along and says, no, 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 it's not about following a list of rules. Mm -hmm. It's about grace. God knows that we can't keep all the rules. Mm -hmm. So we're not saved by rule keeping. We're Mm -hmm. saved by God's grace. Mm -hmm. Then as a person begins to think through that, they're like, okay, so why are there rules listed if the rules don't matter? Does Mm -hmm. that mean it's okay for me to ignore the rules and I don't have to? I mean, so all these things that I'm being told to do, Mm -hmm. I don't actually have to do them. Because it, those don't save me anyways. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, so that's kind of the question is, do we do we ignore the rules then? Do we ignore the rules just because it's not the rules that, that saves us? No. I can tell you that there are probably many students who have challenged that mm-hmm. thinking Yeah. to their great peril. So uh, let's look at verses yeah. 3 and 4 and see what Paul has to say about that. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So if you think about a corpse, let's talk about corpses Mm -hmm. for a minute. That's kind of a, absolutely dead bodies. Dead bodies. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about. Let's yep. talk about dead bodies. So, yeah. what are some things about a corpse? What can they do and do not do? Well, uh, they don't tend to uh, breathe. No. What else? Uh, they don't get up and roam around. No, they don't. Well, we're not supposed to roam around much right now, anyway. Does that? Oh, make, that's true. Does that make us a corpse? Wait a minute. So Easter Sunday, Jesus broke quarantine. He was he, supposed to stay inside. And, and he, he did not did stay not inside. He did not. He did, no, he Jesus, did not do that. Jesus broke well, quarantine Sunday, Easter Sunday. So morning. dead people, they can't just eat or drink whatever they want. Nope. They can't wander around or hang out or go out with their friends. We nope. can't do that right nope. now either. But even though we're doing this, mm-hmm. we are socially distanced. That's right. Social distance. Yes, right here. So dead people don't get excited about things. Mm-hmm. I mean, dead Damn it! That was my first infraction of the day. One, <laughs> I'm working my way down. It, I think I'm doing better every count. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So we'll um, get good at this. Another thing that they cannot do is they cannot live while mm. they're dead. It's true. I mean, you know, you being can, dead is a, a challenge to living. And that was kind of Paul's point about Christians and sin. Mm-hmm. You cannot be alive while you're dead. Yep. But what Paul is saying here is that believers have died to their sin he doesn't mean that our sin nature is eliminated right right? because we still have a sin nature Mm -hmm. uh, because there's not a christian there's not a believer alive today that is free of sin we all have sin right all Mm -hmm. have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god boom that's every single one of us so but what i think he's saying is that being a believer in christ means being united with christ Mm -hmm. so let's look a little bit more let's look at verses um, five through seven and let's look at that at that piece of it won't you read that one for us thanks uh start in verse five okay for if we have been united with him in a death like his we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For no one who has died has been set free from sin. Hmm. Okay. So, 
I think that God, okay, hang on a minute. I got this out of the way and go back to my paper. Sorry, I had to go off camera for a minute. Um, I feel like that in verse 5, mm -hmm. if we've been united with him in, in, in death, okay, we're going to also be united with him when we, when he, you know, he mm -hmm. comes again, right? Yep. So we know that our old self, the old Michelle, the old Wesley, mm -hmm. was crucified with him. True that. So let's talk a little bit about baptism. Hey, Wes, tell me, tell me what baptism represents. You know, there's a lot of symbols going on hang, in, hang in on. baptism. Yeah. Close your eyes. Everyone close your eyes. Hang on. I got to itch. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. I apologize. There's a lot of symbols going on in the, the baptism. The, the, the two big symbols, maybe the ones that are easiest to grab, are uh, the washing away of sin. Right? Mm -hmm. This idea of, of um, you know, uh, though your skins are as though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're washed and made clean. But mm -hmm. but baptism is, is so that picture is definitely there. But probably the stronger picture of baptism is that it's sort of a funeral service. Right. It's it's not just a, a laundry service. Right. It's a funeral Ooh, service. I like the way you put that. Yeah. It's it's being buried under the water. Got it. And being brought back up, uh, sort of representing Jesus being oh. buried and, and brought back. And so that's sort of the. The main symbol going on with baptism is this death, burial, and resurrection. Okay. So bur the burial, when we put mm -hmm. us on, dunk us under the water, the burial represents kind of the confession or the, the confession of our sin, and we're putting that to death. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But that's just part of it because a lot of time is spent talking about dying to your sin or being mm -hmm. buried, your sin being buried and, you know, stuff like that. But... Just like Jesus didn't stay in the tomb, right? Did Jesus didn't say we're going to talk about that next week? Jesus right. next did not Sunday. stay. In, yeah, he did not stay in the tomb. Well, we don't stay under the water, mm -hmm. right? So when we rise up, when they when the preacher lifts you up out of the water, is very symbolic of Jesus Christ being raised in his in the glory that he hmm. you know was originally would you say created to have yeah. when the, in the glory that God intended for him mm -hmm. and, and not only for him, but, but when we are brought up out of that symbolism of being buried and then being brought up out of that water, we too um, are being raised up to live for his glory as well. Yeah. And I think that's a really important thing to consider. So we're, it's like, I'm making a statement that I am leaving my old way of life behind. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to, like everybody see me do this, I'm going to get dunked under the water and I'm going to come up and I'm pledging by that visual act of what I've done um, that I'm going to walk in the, the power of Christ yep. from here forward. And it that the, the dirty water in the baptistry didn't save me. Nope. The Jordan mm -hmm. River for everybody who's ever been to Israel it mm -hmm. always has to go get dunked oh, in the yeah. Jordan. You know, it's kind of a thing. Cool. And um, I want to do that someday. I'm just saying. I saw some people, on my list. I saw some people baptized in the Amazon River a couple of summers ago when I was in Brazil. That is a brave I was, I was brave. Could, I was not you, one of those. Mm, <laughs> no. I think anacondas, 25-foot <laughs> crocodiles, piranha. Bacteria. Oh. You know. Yeah. Those kind of fun usual. things. Mm, yeah. Just the usual things. But yeah, so. I got some good pictures of it, though. I was definitely a photographer. Uh, yeah, you just go with that. There's no way Mama's going to do that. Okay, well, let's take a look at verses 6 through, I'm sorry, verses 8 through 11 and kind of digest that a little bit. So do you want me to read 8 through 11? Yes, please. Okay, I will do that. Um, hang on, i got to find it. Now, if we died with Christ, right, we believe that we will also live with him. Because we know that Christ, having been raised from the dead, will not die again. I think we all know that, right? We can agree to that. Death no longer rules over Christ. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all time. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you too consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. There you go. Those are big words. Yep. Those are good words. Good stuff. Those are very good words. So what what do you think Jesus accomplished for us? I cannot talk for us in his death and resurrection. What did he what did he accomplish for us? Well, I love that verse you kind of hung out on a little bit, the, the end of verse 9 where it says, Death no longer has dominion over him. Mm -hmm. And so this victory <clears throat> over death mm -hmm. is what he offers to us. And <clears throat> because of that, <clears throat> it's not just a, a future event where... 
death doesn't hold us down, mm-hmm. right? That simply, you know, Christ has promised that that where he where he is, we will also, we'll be, also there. be right, yeah. right. And so that that we there's a, a home for us in glory, but but right now, right here, right now, uh-huh. there is victory over the sin death curse that we live under. That's exactly right. And I don't think that we spend enough time Hmm. focusing on that victory that is ours now. I think that it's a good idea for us to, I think it's freeing for us. I think, you know, I think we become so enslaved and in bondage to our sin Hmm. um, that even after we have confessed and asked for forgiveness, that we tend to take it back and hold Hmm. on to it again. And that was never God's intention for us to do that. When, when Christ hung on the cross for us, he hung on the cross for us once and for all. It's mm-hmm. a once and done thing. Yep. And I think that we have a tendency sometimes to, um, I mean, we are our own worst critics, don't you think? I mean, oh, yeah. I think we are. And I think that we tend to hold on to things that we should really let go of. And, and because we do that, we have a tendency to do that. We don't really find the joy that God is has for us because mm-hmm. we're too busy, you know, worrying over yep. things that we've done. Um, so I think it's real important for us to remember that in Christ we are free. We are free from all of that sin. We are free from being the girl, the boy, the man, the woman that we used to be. Mm-hmm. And and as believers, we have to remind ourselves of that constantly because yep. who who in the world, y'all, tell me who this is? Who wants you to be down? Who wants you to be sad, depressed, freaking out, scary, and anxious over all the stuff that's going on right now? Our adversary, the enemy. Exactly. That is not of God. That is not of God. And we have to remember that that is what the adversary, Satan, that's what he wants is for us to be weak, fearful, Mm -hmm. timid, and afraid to be bold in our witness for Christ. Yep. True enough. The people out there, you guys, the people in your lives need to hear a positive message right now. They Mm -hmm. desperately need that. They're crying for it. If someone does not have a relationship with Christ, they're, it's a lot harder for them to find the joy and to find the peace in what we're going through right now. Yep. Um, and, and so they need us to be a light for them, to be an encouragement for them. And I, I find that very true um, just in my life at, at work and with my mm-hmm. clients that I talk to and stuff. There's a lot of people going through a lot of really bad stuff right now. And I hear people and I you know talk to them and and. I haven't been afraid once to say, I'm praying for you. Hmm. I want you to know that I'm thinking about you. I'm just checking in to see how you're doing. I mean, I can't make all your money come back. Sorry, but I just want you to know I love you and we're going to get through this. And, you know, it it just helps sometimes to know that you have someone there with Mm -hmm. you. That is so freeing. for And for people who don't have a relationship with God, they're missing out on that. And it just breaks my heart. Um, So... We have to be careful not only to focus on the resurrection from the dead okay. that's promised through Jesus. Because death no longer rules over him. And you know why? Because Jesus is the king over death. Yep. So we need to let, you know, we need to avoid letting those bad, evil things of the world, you know, rule over us. Yep. There's so many things in our lives that we need to just let go of. So that we can experience the freedom in Christ that God offers for us. So um, I wanted to go ahead and uh, ask this question. I pose this question to you. Yes. Uh, In light of Jesus' death and resurrection, how should we see ourselves? Look in verse 11. How should we see ourselves in light of Jesus' death and resurrection? It says, so you must, uh, you must also, you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God. Okay, I want you to listen. I'm going to read that. I have to read this because if I say if I say it, it won't come out right. Yeah, yeah. I'm the worst about this. I cannot say things <laughs> and it won't come out right. I tell the kids this all the time. I'm sorry, I got to read this or it won't sound right. Okay, yeah. let me read this. If 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 you will see yourselves as no longer under the rule of sin and mm-hmm. selfishness, and instead under the rule of a good and perfect King, that's Jesus, and if we will embrace that. It will change how you handle yourself in every situation, every situation. If you will just quit looking in the mirror at this. I was telling Wes earlier, I look like a frowny old lady. <laughs> I was, when, I, when I watched our thing, for, oh, darn it, I did it again. Four, oh, three, I'm on three. Um, 
I, I looked horrible in the camera thing last. I couldn't even watch it. It was like, oh, I got to cover that screen up. I want to listen, but I'm not looking. So if we will just quit looking at that stuff mm -hmm. and embrace what God has for us, it's going to change how we handle things, how we handle other people, how we handle situations we find ourselves in. Mm -hmm. And I think we just don't do a good job of doing that. When Christ is your king, you don't have to impress anybody. You don't have to be sad and just, oh, my world is falling apart when you don't make the team. Yep. You don't have to be all depressed because you're, the guy you think is cute doesn't really notice you or the girl, vice versa. When Christ is your king, <clears throat> you've got purpose in your life. You have value. You are loved. And you've got a really bright future. And that, that holds true for adults as well as students. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it depends on who you have as on the throne of your life, right? If if stuff or, you know, whatever, whatever name it is on the throne of your life, then that's where your focus is going to be. But when Christ is the king and he is the focus of your life, it changes everything. Your outlook, your viewpoint changes all of that. So anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. So the trigger is you cannot earn your salvation. Did you know that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we can't earn it. There's nothing we can do. We talked about this a little bit last week. You can't earn it. There's no way you can be good enough or do enough stuff to earn your salvation. But the big but to that is we can always choose how to live out our salvation. The salvation is yours. Mm -hmm. Are you going to live, live it out in joy, in service to others? Because let me tell you, in this time that we're going through right now, when you're bored, when you're sick of doing online school, when you've had enough of your brothers and sisters and your parents and whatever else, when you've had enough of it, um, how you act about that is going to depend a lot on how you've chosen to respond. Mm -hmm. And the same is true of our salvation. We can respond to that salvation and stay enslaved to sin, yep. or we can respond to that free gift of salvation that God has given us and freedom. Yep. That's up to us. So the le the next uh, set of scriptures is verses 12 through 14. So let's, uh, Wes, why don't you read that and then okay. let's ask a couple of other questions and we'll be done. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body Ooh. to make you obey its passions. Ooh. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. Mm. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. Okay, what are the members that it talks about? Mm. Well, uh, <clears throat> I mean, your your body, I mean, mm. your yourself. Don't don't present your hands to sin as instruments for unrighteousness. Don't don't present your your eyes. Don't present your your feet, your legs, your 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 wit, your ability to to think cleverly through a situation, your your strength or your speed and quickness, you know whatever you got, mm -hmm. whatever your abilities and talents and your creativeness and your craftiness, I mean, with great power comes great responsibility. Yes, it know. does. But that yeah, I mean, true. you can you can use your abilities for evil. I, I mean, uh -huh. you you can be a leader and lead people. You know, some folks just have a very natural leadership ability, uh -huh. and you can use that for good, or you can use that for, for evil. For evil, you, that you is can use so it for true. Evil. You know, <clears throat> you can so, if you're popular and you kind of have that magnetic personality. Uh -huh. Again, you can use that for the the betterment of people around you, or you can use that as for selfish gain. And mm -hmm. yeah. So, how do you think sin? I want y'all to y'all to be thinking of. I did it again. Four. I'm on four. So how do you think, how do you, how does sin control the lives of a lot of kids today, mm -hmm. a lot of students today? How does sin control our students' lives? You know, it's easy to think of some of the, uh, some of the, the big ones or popular ones to mm -hmm. say something like, let's say chemical dependence, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's easy to say, uh, I'm unhappy with some things going on in my life, and so I'm going to throw some chemicals at that, mm -hmm. uh, liquid chemicals or vapor chemicals or... Uh, liquid chemical, solid chemical, whatever, you know, but I'm going to mm -hmm. take some pills or, uh -huh. or, or inhale some stuff or whatever, or just drink some stuff. Uh -huh. And, uh, and those chemicals are going to cause me to feel better temporarily about my situation. Mm -hmm. But there is a dependence that comes with chemical abuse. Right. Right. Um, and so that's sort of an easy one to say that, you know, um, my, you know, my relationship with drugs and alcohol 
is not a freeing experience. Mm -hmm. It is a enslaving experience. I'm being chained. You know, I'm being enslaved. And I think another big one that not only teenagers but adults face mm -hmm. is pornography. Ooh, and that one is, I don't know if I could if I should call it a secret sin. But I mean, because God knows yeah. obviously what it is, mm -hmm. but nobody but me knows what I'm looking yep. at on my phone or on mm -hmm. my laptop or whatever. And I think that as students, as humankind, as believers, we should be especially on guard against those type of sins yep. and, and, and especially the invisible sins mm -hmm. that other people don't see. And we've got to, yep. we've got to get control of that. You know, I mean, the most innocent little cartoon thing has these little borders, and around those borders, mm, questionable things can pop up. And you, you know, you have to be mm -hmm. stronger than Satan, because Satan will always appeal to that thing mm -hmm. that is your weakness, and he will make it look nice and enticing. And and even some things that are not just you know outright, totally straightforward pornography, and mm -hmm. even just supporting videos uh, where people are maybe we can just say out of dress code you know ah. I mean you're, you're you're watching some videos and yep. you know some of the folks who are participating in that video are well well out of dress code mm -hmm. you know what's your call on that one you say well you know I'm, I'm gonna have to unsubscribe from this channel I don't think this is the you know or you know there's just some some things about this that that are not right mm -hmm. and I can't I can't hang out here with with some of these these compromises. Well, okay, so what does it look like to not let sin reign over you? And mm -hmm. this is another question that we all need to think about. And what what would I look like? What would my life look like if I didn't let sin reign over me or be lord of my life? Mm -hmm. That's the topic. I mean, that's the title of our lesson. It's freedom. Mm -hmm. True freedom. True freedom. Being the young woman or the young man that you are 24-7, mm -hmm. the girl, the guy that God created you to be 24-7 is so much easier than being this girl at school, this girl mm -hmm. with my parents, this girl with my friends, mm -hmm. this girl when I'm hanging out <clears throat> with my boyfriend, same with the boys. Um, if we can learn to be the same person all the time, we don't get trapped in lies. We don't get mm -hmm. pulled into deceit, and we don't get pulled into sin if we can just be that same person. And I promise if we can do that, that it is a mighty witness to the people that you're friends with. And mm -hmm. it will cause them to say, well, you're different. Yep. You know, And if they say, girl, why aren't you doing that anymore? You need to be going doing this. You need to be going with that. That boy thinks you're cute, and you need to you know, give it up a little bit. Those are the people that you will recognize. Uh, yeah, maybe I don't need that. So hmm. true freedom, true freedom comes from God. It is just the biggest blessing. And, I, you know, we all have to keep reminding ourselves of that and to find joy in, in the things that God has placed in front of us, even coronavirus quarantines, even social distancing, even wearing that really cute mask that I had, to, that I had on earlier mm -hmm. um, that did bad things for my hair and makeup. I mean, we, we've got to... Find the joy in it, in everything, in every situation and circumstance. We've got to look for the joy. Mm -hmm. And so my challenge to, to our students mm -hmm. and to you and I for this week is to look for the joy in the situation, the circumstances that we're going through. Mm -hmm. And that, my friends, is what I have for us today. Excellent. Thank you, Michelle. You're welcome. All right. <clears throat> Let's take a look at our uh, big ideas then. Okay. Oh, turn All right. around. Get in the screen. Do All right. The screen. So, yeah, you can do it. <laughs> <Be canal. clears throat> Jesus conquered sin and death so that we might truly live. Our verse for the day was Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6, 23. All right. So again, regardless of what you and I have said about the scriptures today, in the end, they speak for themselves. And that is probably too small to read. So uh, Romans... <clears throat> Uh, six, Romans 6, starting in verse 1. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? 
We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For no one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law, but under grace. And those are the most amazing Amen. words, being under grace. Under grace. Yeah. All right, so our questions for today are, has today's sessions challenged or changed how you think of what it means to be free? Do you actively think of yourself as dead to sin and alive in Christ? What might keep us from seeing ourselves this way? How might we help or encourage each other to more consistently live out our new identity in Christ? As one who has been raised to new life in Christ, how will you live differently this week at school? And you know, I, I, I get this out of like the lesson stuff and I had to edit a little bit because, you know, yeah. school on social media or, or, or at home. All right. Moving yep. right along. The best way to keep up with what the youth are doing is always uh, with our remind text, but certainly now more than ever. Um, but yeah, so if you want to uh, text uh, at Ridgely to the number 81010, you can get the youth reminders about things like when this video is going to be live and things like that. Yep. Speaking of live videos, <clears throat> next Wednesday, we actually have a challenge. If you missed the challenge that was texted out, I believe it went out on Thursday. The challenge went out. <clears throat> but this coming Wednesday is a little bit different. So sign up for the Reminds. We'll send another one out. But it is an Action Wednesday this Wednesday. You guys are making videos that we're going <laughs> to... That'll be the lesson. So it's not it's not me and Lindsay teaching the lesson this Wednesday. It's you guys Ooh. and the videos that you're making right now. Because you're stuck at home anyway. So just uh, grab a camera and... You know, I can't wait to Be see silly us. and send it in. And we'll, uh, we'll have our little Funniest Home Videos thing going <laughs> it's gonna on. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. I can't wait. All right, and of course that is like way too small to see. So let me oh, yeah. let me see if I can get the camera help me out here a little bit. All right, so our first prayer request is for the Uganda team. I don't know if you need to pause the video there and pray for the Uganda missionaries. I can't wait till you get to number four. I know we all know what it is, but sorry, try to step out of my own shadow. <laughs> Did not think this through very well. No, don't know what the plan is exactly. I could step to the other side of the camera, but then I can't really see what uh, this is. This is entertaining. All right. There is praying for Italy. Praying for Colombia. Again, feel free to uh, pause the video if you need to take a moment and read the prayer request. And then we're going to pray for the uh, IMAC people. I'm definitely pronouncing that correctly. Nobody check me on that. The IMAC people of Afghanistan and Pakistan. And then finally, our Lord and Savior, Jesus said that we are to pray for the Lord of the harvest to send workers into his harvest field. 